We, we've been talking up to now about molecular compounds. We've been doing Lewis structures. We've been showing how um, elements can share, pardon me, how elements can um, share electrons. So now we're going to talk briefly about ionic compounds. And these are things, of course, where there is such a big difference in electronegativity, there's no sharing to be had. It's grab and go. One element happily gets ditches, throws overboard their electrons. Another element um, happily picks them up. So they're big clusters of positive and negative ions. And they're arranged so that you have a balanced number of positive and negative charges. And that's what makes it neutral overall. Um, for the most part, these things exist in crystalline solids. Now, does that help you in figuring out if what you were looking at today were ionic or molecular? Because I'll, I'll give you the hint that some of them were ionic, some of them were molecular. And, of course, the point of the lab is figuring out based on their characteristics which is which. So, everything looks kind of crystalline. Huh, that doesn't help. So, they're crystalline solids for the most part, um, and they're arranged so charges are equal. Now, that said, let me shrink this. You know, what I'm showing here is something where it's one-to-one, -one, so you have positive charges, negative charges, positive charges, negative charges. That's not the only possible arrangement. You can have negative, negative, two plus. You know, one, one negative, one negative, two plus. That happens um, quite frequently. And we'll be doing formulas soon where you'll see how that happens. Um, it's just got to be balanced. So overall, they have to add up to zero in terms of a net charge. Yeah. So what I'm talking about here is something, it's an actual atom that has a one minus charge versus an atom that has a two plus charge. So I'm talking about the charge on an individual atom. So we're, we're treating the, ad, the ion as though it was just like a point in space. Um, and some ion, of course, we know that there are ions with plus one, plus two, plus three, minus one, minus two, minus three. And what we're talking about is those adding up to zero. Okay, ionic compounds and Lewis dots. So up to now, all of the Lewis, dot Lewis dots and Lewis structures you've done have been with molecular compounds. That's the most common use. But in... Um, in your practice, you did have a few ions. And when we're doing an ion as a Lewis dot diagram, anything that's charged gets brackets. So anything that is non-neutral gets those brackets. So here we're showing a neutral atom of chlorine. It's got seven valence electrons. What does chlorine tend to do to make itself happy? it picks up an extra electron um, because it would like to have that you know, full valence feeling. So, and I sometimes will color code that extra electron it's picked up just to kind of keep it straight in my own mind. So when we show the chlorine ion, we're going to show it with brackets, with that extra electron that it gained, and with its charge. So if we want to show a compound made of two ionic substances, and I'll use um, good old NaCl. It's dependable and friendly and really, you know, common. So we'll draw sodium with its one little valence electron. And what does sodium do to make itself happy? It gets rid of that electron. So sodium just loses that one electron that it's got. So then we'll show it bracketed and as a one plus. Now, these things are not sharing electrons. They're not physically connected. They are attracted via um, electrical magnetic forces. So we don't show them as sort of the single kind of unit thing that we show molecular compounds with. But we can do this, and that shows sodium chloride, the compound. They're not physically, their electrons are not physically interacting. Chlorine's holding the electron. Sodium gave it up but they're attracted by a very, very powerful force of electromagnetic attraction, electrical attraction, um, due to their opposite charges. Okay, so ionic compounds have some distinct characteristics. 
they arrange themselves so that all those positives and negatives are evenly spaced out. And what it does is it balances attraction or repulsion. Just like we talked about bond length, cutie pie. Cutie pie! Best friend. I always think of Newman when I hear that. Maybe that reference is lost on you guys now that I think about it. Um, Seinfeld. Okay. Um, they do the same thing. They arrange themselves so that the attraction is maximized to the degree where the repulsion can be minimized. So you get these three-dimensional um, lattices. It looks like um, Tinker Toys. And when we do the Carnegie trip in the spring, um, you'll be doing a, a unit before we go on crystal structure. Oh, gosh, remind me. One of your assignments tomorrow is going to be look at, um, there's a crystal growing contest at YSU. You can grow crystals and compete with them. Remind me to talk about that. Well, I'm not going to talk about it tomorrow. I will leave you links to read about the contest. And I think um, basically I'll have you all grow some crystals. And then um, we'll have a vote in the high school in some categories. And the winners can go to YSU to compete. It's an international competition, actually. If you win at YSU, you go to the state. If you win at the state, you go to the federal competition. I don't know where the international is. They do it every year. It's like International Intergalactic Chemistry Society or something. Maybe there's a planetary runoff. I don't know. Um, structure, because this structure is different than bonded molecular stuff, um, we don't talk about bond energy. We talk about what's called lattice energy. I don't care that we're never going to calculate lattice energy. All I want you to know is that lattice energy is associated with ionic compounds. Okay? And it's, it's the energy that's sort of contained in those gaseous ions, and it gets released out into the environment when you form the solid, when they come together. Juicy stuff. Molecular versus ionic. Okay, so the juicy bit is this. Uh, molecular versus ionic. So molecular compounds, sugar. Um, i trying to think of some other molecular compounds I can name without giving away too much. Um, sulfur hexafluoride. We haven't talked about, we haven't done anything with that, nor will we. Um, molecular compound within the molecule. The forces are really powerful. It's really hard to break that molecule. The bond energy is very high. Uh, they're holding hands. They're physically connected. Their, their orbitals are overlapping. Um, oils. You know, coconut oil, olive oil, um, petroleum oil. Okay, tomorrow you'll have stuff on classroom. This slide is going to help you with your lab. Have a good weekend, folks. Good long weekend. Enjoy homecoming.